Uh, so I'm going to be giving our next talk today on a, a topic I lo I'd like to speak about, which is uh, Dupuytren's disease and different treatment options. And specifically, we're going to be talking about a surgical alternative in the treatment of Dupuytren's disease called needle aponeurotomy, which some of you may have heard of. So just to br briefly review, Dupuytren's disease is an aut autosomally dominantly inherited connective tissue disorder affecting the fascia on the palm side of the hand and fingers. It's mediated by cells called fibroblasts, which form pathologic nodules and cords in the palm. And although initially these may be um, small and benign, they, they can grow in a progressive fashion to curl the fingers into the palm. And once the fingers curl into the palm, that's what we call Dupuytren's contracture. Primarily involves the MCP and PIP joints, but there are also web space contractures, adduction contractures, um, uh, thumb cords, and various different patterns. So the basic science of Dupuytren's disease is basically an imbalance of collagen synthesis over degradation. More collagen is produced than is broken down. And that um, myofibroblast and fibronectin production is increased, which forms these uh, nodules um, in the palmar fascia. And these may enlarge distally and proximally into these cord-like structures. And when you look at these cords, there's an increase in the ratio of type 3 to type 1 collagen. And that's important for one of the potential treatments called collagenase or Zyflex. But um, these uh, connective cords connect the skin to the palmar fascia and can restrict uh, finger joint extension. When we're looking at the anatomy or the pathoanatomy of Dupuytren's disease, there are normal ligaments that connect the skin on the palm side of the hand to the bones in the hand. And these normal fascial ligaments become pathologic in Dupuytren's disease, forming these various types of um, cords, central cords, pretendinous cords, spiral cords, which can cause the uh, fingers to curl into the palm and have various types of deformity. So the um, interesting thing about Dupuytren's, it's very unpredictable. The natural history is not clear. If someone comes into my office and they have a small nodule, I can't tell them this is definitely going to be a problem or it, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, one Scandinavian study um, that was done over a long period found that 34% of patients that initially presented without a contracture but with a nodule or a cord um, developed a contracture within 18 years. So about, you know, about a third of patients who have a nodule may develop a contracture. Another study found that 8% of patients with palmar nodules met surgical criteria at nine years after diagnosis, and 26 uh, progressed from unilateral to bilateral disease. Um, most, many cases that we see are mild. It's usually painless, and in th these cases we, we just observe people. But unfortunately, there is frequently a progression which can be at times severe and cause limitations in hand function and cosmetic deformity. And the frustrating thing about this problem is there's still no cure for Dupuytren's disease, no permanent cure. So what works? Well, lots of things have been tried, but basically there are three things that can satisfy the goal of improving the contracture, allowing the fingers to, to straighten. Uh, the most time-tested treatment is surgical fasciectomy. Uh, there's also, since 2009, an FDA-approved injection called collagenase, marketed under the name Zyflex. And then there's percutaneous needle aponeurotomy, which I'll speak more about, and which is a very long-standing treatment, but has gained more interest in recent years. Lots of other things don't work. If you have um, just an isolated contracture, stretching or splinting alone doesn't tend to help. Vitamin A or E cream doesn't help. People have tried all sorts of other medications and even radiation, for which there's some scant evidence, but also potential harm in um, increasing risk of possible sarcomas with radiation. So let, let's just briefly talk about the two, the two uh, treatments other than needle aponeurotomy. So surgical fasciectomy has been performed since the 1800s. It was first performed by Dr. Guillaume Dupuytren, for whom this uh, disease is named after and for whom we all have trouble pronouncing this uh, disease. Um, most people come into my office and say, I have dupe, dupe. I say, D don't worry. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a treatment in which surgery is done to remove the diseased tissue, and there are numerous variations, um, ranging from just a limited um, snip of the tissue to a radical uh, fasciectomy and removing the skin. The advantages of surgery is an excellent correction is possible. You can remove all of the diseased tissue and all the palpable cords and nodules. You can address multiple digits at once, and of all the treatments, it has the lowest risk of recurrence. 
but it's the hardest recovery. There's, there are big scars often. Um, there's post-operative wound care that can be difficult. Occasionally we need to do skin grafts. There's extensive therapy that's required for these patients because they do get quite stiff. And a lot of patients don't realize it's a real hindrance in your life for about two to three months until um, you know, there's full recovery. And there is a notable complication rate. Um, in primary cases, there's about a 17% complication rate, and that goes up to 39% in revision cases. Some of these complications are severe, including nerve and arterial injuries and amputation. So an alternative came out and was FDA approved in 2009 that many of you know about called collagenase, aka Zyaflex. It's basically a combination of two enzymes which break down the types one and, two, one and three collagen in Dupuytren's cords, but does not affect the other types of collagen in blood vessels and nerves and other structures in the hand. So it's safe uh, with regards to nerve and blood vessel and other collagen tissue in the hand. Um, it's injected in the office. A patient comes back one to seven days after injection, after which uh, point the cord is manipulated. So it's an it's a, it's a effective treatment and a nice option. I do perform a lot of it. It's performed in the office over two visits. There's no scar, no incision. It has a relatively low side effect profile. There's not prolonged therapy. Usually patients will see a therapist for one to three visits and will do nighttime splinting. And it has a fairly high success rate in the short term. The disadvantages are, although it's not a surgery, it's still painful. People will have a bruised, painful hand for two to three weeks, sometimes more. There are very common minor transient side effects, including bruising, swelling, blistering, skin tears occur in about 13% of patients. And we did a study at um, ONS looking at risk factors for uh, skin tears. Some patients may have as high as of a 60% uh, risk of a skin tear um, after Zyaflex. And rarely there's the feared complication of flexor tendon rupture, which occurs fortunately in a very small percentage, about 0.3% of patients treated with Zyflex have been reported to have a flexor tendon rupture. The, uh, the problem with Zyflex is recurrence is common. There's close to a 50% recurrence in five years, although it can be repeated. And PIP joint contractures don't respond as well as MCP joint contractures. So let, let's, in, in background of other treatment options, let's t talk a little more about needle ape neurotomy. So it was first described by Dr. Um, uh, Sir Ashley Cooper in the 1800s, where he described a limited uh, transection of the cord percutaneously. It's been mo it um, has been modified in uh, the 70s and uh, 90s, and more recently by other investigators, um, as a procedure basically where we use a hypodermic needle to partially section these cords in the palm at multiple strategic levels. And the nice thing is it's minimally invasive, it works right away, and allows early return to activities. Here's a um, sort of schematic showing you what's done. So there's um, a hypodermic needle, typically a 25 gauge needle, a very small needle, that's used to percutaneously <coughs> puncture and transect the cord at multiple levels. And this is done with injections of very small amount of intradermal analgesia, so it numbs up the skin, but it doesn't numb up the digital nerves, so we can monitor a patient's nerve function. And for some reason, in many of our trainings, um, a lot of hand surgeons have not been exposed to this, and a small number of hand surgeons did the majority of this. For instance, now retired Dr. Charles Eaton performed 10,000 of these procedures, and many people would go fly to see him in uh, Jupiter, Florida, to have a needle ape neurotomy done. The technique is fairly simple. You use small amounts of 0.1 to 0.5 cc's of local 1% uh, lidocaine into the skin. The 25 gauge needle is used as a scalpel. If you look at a 25 gauge needle from the side, it's got two cutting edges, and you puncture and sweep the um, needle through the cord to transect the cord partially at multiple levels to weaken it. And because the uh, numbing medicine is only into the skin, that allows us to monitor sensation of the finger and make sure we're not getting too close to the digital nerves which are often wrapped around these cords. Um, so um, another person prolific in this treatment, Dr. Gary Pess, who's one of the few people who's published on this technique, he published a series of a thousand um, fingers successfully treated, um, or a thousand fingers, and he found that successful correction to within a five degree contracture or less was obtained in 95% of patients with MP joint contractures and 67% of patients with PIP joint contractures. And at a minimum three-year follow-up, 72% of patients kept their correction at the MP joint, 
but only 31% at the PIP. So recurrence, he found, was higher in patients with PIP contractures and in younger patients. So the general advantages of needle ape neurotomy are it's performed in one office visit, unlike collagenase, which requires a couple visit visits, you have an immediate result. There's minimal pain, it's definitely less painful than Zyflex, and certainly surgery. There's no, none of the bruising, swelling, or blistering that people get with collagenase or surgery. It has very low side effect profile compared to surgery. It's the most cost effective of all the treatments that we have available. And multiple fingers can be treated simultaneously, unlike Zyflex, where we can inject up to two joints in one setting. The disadvantages are skin tears are not very uncommon, although that's a fairly minor uh, side effect in transient. If you look at this diagram, it shows you that frequently the spiral cords in the palm that affect the PIP joint wrap around the digital nerves. So there is a risk that you could injure the digital nerve with this procedure, and that's why we have to be careful with our intradermal analgesia not to numb up the nerve so we can monitor the nerve as the procedure is done. Correction is less complete versus surgical treatment, and we can address skin or capsular contractures with uh, needle ape neurotomy. So I, I like to try to be evidence approach in how we um, look at the data, so we'll review a couple studies quickly. So a study in 2013 out of the Journal of Hand Surgery was a retrospective review that looked at 29 patients treated with collagenase and uh, needle ape neurotomy with at least three months of follow-up, and they basically found in the short term there was a um, similar non-statistically different success rate between collagenase and uh, percutaneous needle ape neurotomy and, and similar satisfaction. A more recent study in 2017, which was a higher level uh, study, a, retro, a, a randomized controlled trial that looked at 50 patients followed for at least two years, randomized to collagenase or needle ape neurotomy. They found improvement at two years was maintained only in 7% of treatments treated with collagenase versus about 30% in needle ape neurotomy. Again, this highlights that there's really no long-term permanent cure for, for Dupuytren's, and a lot of these treatments are sort of maintenance treatments. Uh, this study also found that collagenase led to more complications, albeit transient, complications in 93% of patients versus only 24% of complications in needle ape neurotomy. Again, these are generally minor transient side effects. So how about the cost? Well, a nice study uh, done, um, looked uh, at a cost utility analysis comparing fasci surgery, fasciectomy, needle ape neurotomy, and collagenase. And it, it looked, there's something called a quality adjusted life year. So the generally accepted threshold for a cost effective treatment is a, a gain in one quality adjusted life year should be $50,000 or less of healthcare expenditure. So the cost of surgery was about $820,000. Um, dollars per quality adjusted life year. The cost of collagenase at its current market price was also extremely uh, costly at $166,000 per quality, whereas needle ape neurotomy was the most cost effective, $96,000 per quality. Um, another nice study done at the Mayo Clinic with one of my mentors, Marco Rizzo, Rizzo was published in 2019, and this was a 12-year retrospective review of Dr. Rizzo's uh, about 900 interventions, um, including needle ape neurotomy, collagenase, and open fasciectomy. And he found that at two years, the reintervention rate was about 24% with needle ape neurotomy, 41% with collagenase, and only 4% with surgery. So surgery does have the lowest recurrence rate. Um, the authors found in this series that more severe contractures in a younger age predicted reintervention after needle ape neurotomy or collagenase. Again, these treatments can be repeated though, whereas with surgery, we hope to not repeat surgical treatments. And the cumulative cost per digit, um, including reintervention at five years, was the, the lowest direct cost with needle ape neurotomy at only about 1,500 per needle ape neurotomy versus about five or 6,000 for surgery or collagenase. So current trends in treatment, I would say, Interestingly, since 2009, when the FDA approved collagenase, that's also a time when hand surgeons became more interested in non-operative treatments in general, including needle ape neurotomy, and there's been a trend towards decrease in the amount of surgeries that hand surgeons are doing and increase in the amount of both uh, collagenase and needle ape neurotomy treatments. Let's review just a couple brief examples. Uh, this was a patient I saw recently that had an isolated 55-degree uh, 
MCP joint contracture with a small PIP joint contracture. This is an ideal patient because you can see he has a nice pretendinous central cord. It's not a cord that's on the ulnar or radial side of the digit where it's wrapping around the digital nerves. Um, so this is the technique. After numbing up the skin, we use a 25 gauge needle to um, gently puncture the skin and the cord. Let's see if we can get this video to work. And then once the cord is punctured, you gently uh, sweep the needle back and forth to transect the cord. This may look painful, but it's really painless. Once patients are numbed up, they, they really don't feel a thing. And my experience has been this is um, a less unpleasant procedure than collagenase, which does cause more blistering and bruising and uh, pain. And then I, I, we give the patient a little bit more of a uh, block to numb up their digital nerves, and then a gentle manipulation is performed in the office where you, you stretch the finger, and you'll often feel or hear a few pops. You can notice a very small skin tear developing in the middle of the palm, and this is uh, a very well-tolerated minor side effect, but something that does commonly happen. But the benefit is a few minutes later, the patients are fairly straight. Once the swelling comes down and patients are splinted, uh, th this particular patient achieved um, near complete full extension. Here's another patient with a PIP joint contracture that was close to 90 degrees, and she had a nice uh, result getting within about 10 degrees of full PIP joint extension just minutes after the procedure. This was another patient I recently treated, a, um, a, a patient with multiple medical problems, a poorly controlled type 2 diabetes. He wasn't a good surgical candidate. He had multiple contractures that were fairly severe. And, and you can see these little dots on his hand. Those were where I was marking out the portal sites where we inject the lidocaine. And this is just a few minutes later. Fair, you know, not complete correction, but fairly good correction for just a few minutes of work and avoiding surgery and scars. So just a few takeout points. Now that uh, hand surgeons are becoming more interested in uh, learning about and performing needle apeneurotomy, it is really an effective and safe alternative to surgery or collagenase. It can be performed in the office. There's an immediate correction. It's the most cost-effective treatment option. It has the shortest recovery and minimal pain associated with it, and multiple fingers can be treated simultaneously. Again, unfortunately, there's still no cure for the treatment of Dupuytren, so it's important for our patients to know that any one treatment is unlikely to completely get rid of the underlying disease. And uh, for this reason, um, I think we should have numerous treatment options in our bag, and treatment should be tailored to the individual patient. Thank you.